previously on AI the Somnium Files. Oh, hey Iris. Oh, remember when you blackmailed me? <laughs> oh, remember when I gave you a piggyback? Oh, remember when you were in my car and you said you were gonna die? Well, oh, remember when you danced? <laughs> remember when you died? <laughs> Hi hi, it's me Key, and welcome to another episode of my uh, The Swimming Files Let's Play. Last episode, Iris died and came back to life. So, uh, yeah, so it was very suspicious. <laughs> so I'm gonna find out what's going on. Hitomi also shared her lovely romantic story Let's get with started. Mr. Falk over here. Uh, and yeah, it kind of felt like the second half of his story that he shared at the interrogation last time. So I'm curious to see what's gonna happen this time we're talking to him. But yeah, before I start this video, I just want to address the upcoming sequel, uh, AI The Summoning Files Nirvana Initiative. Uh, so feel free to skip to the time code you see on the screen if you don't want to listen to this or if you're watching this in the future where it won't even matter. Uh, so yeah, last ep I was trying to say like, hey guys, I'll try my best to finish this game before the sequel comes out. And yeah, I was a fool. I feel like I still have at least five more episodes of AI The Somnian Files to get through, uh, including this one. And that's just kind of stupid impossible <laughs> in my circumstances. And I just want to be honest and realistic with my own goals. So I don't think I'll be able to start the sequel at the release date. But honestly, I think that's okay. Like, I would prefer people to play the game for themselves anyway for watching a playthrough. But yeah, if you do choose to watch my playthrough, I just want to say that I really appreciate it and I think it'll be a really fun time! Uh, but yeah, I just want to be mindful of my own health and workload uh, because I'm going to be incredibly busy these next two months. I'm super appreciative of everyone who is excited for the sequel and actually excited to watch me play it as well. It'll definitely happen one way or another, so sit tight and I hope that we can have fun together experiencing the sequel. Sorry to keep you waiting, Falco. Let's do this. A man known as Number 89 is sitting right in front of me. So what's your name, Falco? Number 89. Your real name. I don't know, I forgot. Oh wait, before that. Peter, you're in this room, aren't you? Oh, I can't even look at him, never mind. How many people have you killed? I don't know. It's not like I'm counting. Uh, where are you from? Djibouti. Djibouti. <laughs> Northeast Africa. A small republic of roughly 900,000. I don't take kindly to stupid lies. Why'd you call Sosijima's secretary? Ooh, yes, that's right. I oh, know. you know about that. What connection do you have? It's true. I called Sejima's secretary. Is it through the Kumakuras? I got him on the line and I told him something very important. You spoke with him directly? Oh, so didn't say that. Yeah. What did you tell him? I told him to call somebody. <gasps> Shoko? Somebody. Oh. I can't tell you anymore. <sighs> hmm. About Shoko's murder. All right. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Two days ago, you called our investigation office. You said you know who killed Shoko Nadami. That's right. Who? Hey, don't be so hasty. We haven't agreed on a deal. You're gonna let me out of prison, right? No. <laughs> yes, I promise. No, I lie. <laughs> You're lying. Yeah. You don't want to release me. That's fine. I was expecting this anyway. I just wanted a good excuse to leave the prison. Okay. What do you mean? You really want to know? Here's what I mean! Uh-oh, I feel like something bad is gonna happen. Oh! Oh god, does he? Really? You'll make a good hostage for me. Take me to the exit. Now. Really? Oh my god. 
Not only Ota, I get knocked out by <laughs> freaking Falco too! <laughs> well, that was definitely a shorter interrogation than I thought it would be. God damn it, Pewter, why didn't you help me? Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Pewter! Oh, darn. Yeah, I'd say. Are you kidding me? A criminal serving a life sentence just escaped from Metro Police. He made it look easy, too. My goodness. I ordered everyone to keep quiet about this, but it's only a matter of time before the press sniffs this out. What the heck? He's fisting too! He's doing... He's doing the fisting animation! Are you a fister too? <laughs> Mr. Fister? <laughs> we need to get number 89 back before then. Yeah, Peter, what do you have to say for yourself? How'd he get away? He punched out an officer and stole his clothes. He put on the uniform and brought me with him at gunpoint. Well, he had the gun in his pocket, uh, hiding it. No one on the floor even knew this was happening. He got on the elevator and made it to the ground floor. He even stole my security card. He said he'd kill me if I tried anything. Damn, we kind of suck, don't we? <laughs> I suppose the whole escape took him about uh, five minutes. He must have planned this. You're rather calm about all this. I'm coming down from being terrified for my life. I'm in a bit of a fugue state right now. Where's my gun? <laughs> my gun. Number 89 still has it. Boss, can you believe this? <laughs> but don't worry. Uh, I mean, I got knocked out. I oh, have a fun. spare. I'll give it to you later. Oh, cool. Another gun. Great. <laughs> Where's number 89? Come on. How would I know? After he got to the exit, he let me go. I didn't see where he went. I collapsed right there. What? You fainted? Boss, I'm so sorry. Boss, <laughs> it's my fault. You I like away. how the other option was don't apologize. No, I'm gonna apologize. Ma'am, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Don't waste time apologizing. Go catch him. I'm the one who has to go on an apology tour now. <sighs> you really messed up this time. I'm sorry. Ah! Okay, time to check out your room because that's what we gotta do every single time. God damn it! But no keyhole for it. Okay. Oh, cool. Same as you, Date. There's no keyhole for me. What do you mean by that? What? I don't get it. <laughs> It's a chair. I really like chairs. Oh, th great, Peter. They look delicious. What the frick? What the hell are you talking about? Are you alright, Peter? <laughs> Did becoming a hostage mess with your brain? Bags hanging in a rack. Colorful handcuffs. What? <laughs> the AC. Are you gonna whistle? <sighs> so Brilliant. now you're ogling me too? <laughs> Okay. I'll stop. Oh! What? What? <laughs> oh my god. Happy Pride, Pewter. Happy Pride. I can't blame you. Not on Pride Month. <laughs> Wine bottle. Date, Pewter. Once we're done here, let's pop that bottle. <laughs> boss, I think you need that right now. Not a bad idea. But when the boss gets drunk, she has the tendency to crush balls. What? In that case, perhaps we should never solve this case. What are you doing with your drunk boss? Mario, we're in a crisis. I want to go to Susukino. This is not the time, I say as I keep clicking on random stuff. Spiking is an important part of volleyball. Hmm. Spiking. Spike. Spike Chun? Soft? What is that? Brewing. That's cool. nostalgic. What? When I was a kid, I used to put a broom between my legs and pretend to be a witch. Pewter, that's very adorable. Fish and clag, big catch. Wait a minute, did you let number 89 escape on purpose? No, of course not. So that you could catch the bigger fish? Oh, well, that wouldn't do anything. Yeah, boss, exactly. We don't have a tracking device on him or anything. I was kidding. Shogi, it's King Shogi A Shogi piece. player gave that to me. I think his name was Hanyu. 
See, Han Yu? Yep, that's him. I don't know who that is. Happy birthday! I thought they were gonna be like, uh huh, you see, 89 escaping is just like uh, his birthday because he has a new lease on life now. And they're like, shut up, Peter! <laughs> oh, that's right, Peter, don't you have Yaoi under here? No? Okay, fine. Clock. If you had the power to stop time, what would you do? I would stop 89 from escaping. Do you even have to ask? Your heart rate is increasing rapidly. Dade was thinking something pervy. Snowboard. I want to knock you over the head with that snowboard right about now. Yes. Then allow me to say this. I will slalom away from that attack. Not funny. The map. Okay, where is he? Where is he on the map? Show me, Pewter. <laughs> Boy, that poster. Do you like it, Pewter? Aw, oh, damn. Dade, Civil. look. A UFO. That's a symbol. Sure. Stationary Boss, bike. I turned your stationary bike into a coffee grinder. What? You use the pedals to grind the beans. Why the hell did you do that? <laughs> the lifesaver. That's what you're gonna need, Peter. Plastic. They were kind and had a big smile. Such a shame. Your boyfriend that you killed? Reminds me of your ex, Dante. What? It shouldn't. I think that was it. God damn it. Summarize for me. Dante. I know you are already aware of this, but there are security cameras all over this compound. Yes, yes. I checked all of them. Number 89 fled in a car that was waiting for him. Oh, so this was planned. So he had an accomplice? Yes. Mm. But how could he plan it? Did you see who was driving? I did. Who was it? You and I know him well. Renju? Renju? <laughs> what the hell, dude? He helped 89 escape, but why? Is he doing this for Hitomi? But I don't think Hitomi would want, like, you know, to break the law anymore. <laughs> like, are they gonna run away? But she has to think of Iris. There's no way they could. Oh. I told Boss and Peter what Iva revealed to me. Renju? Oh, why? Date, Moma is calling. Oh, Mama, hey! Moma, from the Kumakuras? I'll connect him. Sup? Hey, Date. Yeah. I just got the word. Renju's been seen. Yeah. What? Where? Hey, don't forget our deal. Ah, oh, that's right. You want to see Tessa. Deal? What deal? You forgot already? I'm talking about Tessa. Oh, right. <laughs> Peter and Boss are like, what what does he want Tessa for? <laughs> and he's like, oh well. I'll be waiting. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah. What should we do? We have no choice. We have to take her. To Moma? Yes. She's a bribe. <laughs> Not a bride, but a bribe. <laughs> Let's go! Sorry I'm late. I know you said you were done at three. Oh my gosh! <laughs> late, 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 you're late. You know, I don't blame her. I would also be mad. He's late by like one and a half hours. I'm going home. But then again, he did get knocked out, so it's not his fault. Never! Have you forgotten the vows you exchanged? You are not a bride. <laughs> are you drunk? No, of course not. You're drunk. I kid, 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 kid. I'm kidding. I can't believe I'm gonna shovel forge with you. I'm getting excited. No, we're we're not. We are not shovel forging. I was talking about the date, silly. Shovel forge and a date are synonymous, apparently. All right then. So where are we going? No, she's not here. My day is ruined. No. <laughs> the reception is nowhere to be seen. Where is she? <laughs> the usual reception isn't here. <gasps> no. No! This is the worst. A slipper, usually made of leather. 
That's a loafer. Oh my god, and they still have more dialogue here, huh? Okay, what what insect is it today? Date, look! It's a Parastatoda tepidariorum! Holy crap! Parastatoda Hooray! Go, little Parastatoda tepidariorum! Erica Holica, you are a goddess. I think it's only excited about insects. I have no idea what bugs you're talking about, though. Alright, let's check all this random stuff. Oh, that's Quinten Rapcone. Okay, cool. Oh, I've heard of them. Sure, I'm not gonna even try. <laughs> Alright, what's on the magazine rack? Special. Catch a skyfish. Next time these magazines get replaced, I'm taking that one. What is a skyfish? My table? Date, I've been thinking. About what? I have my greeting ready. You were asking me to say hello to the table earlier? Oh my goodness. Do you have nothing to say? Well, Iris, the receptionist isn't here, so I guess I have to listen to you. Iris is acting kind of weird. A really nice place. A really nice place. Huh? A nice place? I wonder where. I'm excited! Oh, I didn't even look at the other options. Where was... Aw, oh, man. What? Let's do that again. <laughs> Alright, so we're either going to a really nice place, to where the dragon is, a gangster bar, to a Yakuza office building. You know what? Let's just be honest. No point lying to you. I need you to come with me to an office. I'll have to inspect it though. What? An insect show? I didn't know you were into that. Well, okay, it's kind of weird, but whatever. Let's go to the insect show. Okay. <laughs> She's like, okay, let's go see that whatever what it was. Go, little Parastatoda Tepidariorum. Yeah, let's go see that thing. I took Iris to the Kubakuras. So where are the Azeptila Praticolas? Holy crap. You want to say that again? So, where are the Aziptila Praticolas? Jesus. <laughs> Uchikoshi is like, coming up with all the hard bug names. <laughs> Why do you guys know all this? Uh, there he is right oh, there. Is this guy the Aziptila Praticola? Yes. <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, aha, uh -huh, you're so funny. Oh, sorry. Are you the insect trainer? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Start the insect show now! Ibo should be excited for this too. Wait a minute. This is a gangster den. Took you long enough. Date, you tricked me! I wasn't trying to trick you. You were mistaken about the insect. You just misunderstood me. Oh, so she likes <laughs> as well. Oh, okay. I'm glad I picked this option. All right, well, that's so cute. You're like, oh, bug friend. All right, well, I'm Mama, about to abandon you here. I the deal. <laughs> so, bye. <laughs> you sure did. You want to hear about Renju? Mr. Okiura? Yeah, he uh, le helped a prisoner escape. Who's like your mom's boyfriend? <laughs> uh, about the Renju tip. You said on the phone that you saw Renju. Yeah, I had all my people looking for him. So tell me where he is. Hmm, I could. Hey, I held up my end. I brought Iris like you asked. Date, come here. What's going on? Mama took me to the corner of the room. Date, I don't quite know how to ask this, but can you ask Tessa if I can shake her hand, please? Ooh. Oh, that's it? It's like the idol greetings. Sure. Mom and I broke our huddle. Iris, could you do me a favor? He wants to shake hands. A favor? He, uh, he wants to see your boobs. <laughs> What the fuck, dude? I didn't say that! Oh, sorry. What I meant was, he wants to shake your hand. Oh, 
a handshake. Sure. Now she's like, what was that part about the boobs? Uh. I would never show my boobs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. I shook Boba's hand gently and shook it. Dante, this is the happiest day of my life. It feels good to be the boss. All right, Boba. <laughs> so how about it? All right, here it goes. Renju was seen in two places. Look at his hands. He's like, yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah! <Whoa! laughs> First, Sunfish Pocket, the maid cafe. Ooh, I guess we gotta go back then. Second, Ikume Shrine. Yeah, no new locations. <laughs> Sunfish Pocket and Akume Shrine. Got it. Thanks. No problem, bro. Really. <laughs> We're bros now? Anything funny in here? Anyone in the locker? Nope. Partition. Hey, Tessa! Let's have a party! No thanks. <laughs> Shut down. Do you like lanterns? lanterns? Oh. Hey, Iris. What do you think of when you see two lanterns pushed together? Huh? I mean, it kind of looks like something, right? Uh, not really. What are you implying? <laughs> no, no, really. Picture two lanterns pushed together, and you put your face between them. What? <laughs> There's something that reminds you of? Lanterns. What, you mean boobs? Damn it, Moma. You're not supposed to say it. What kind of long ass Saggy boobs are you thinking about, Dante? <laughs> hey, you still got it in there? <laughs> yeah, there's an AZ figure here to buy in the safe. Wow, I can turn really far in this perspective. Dante, look! A UFO! Okay, that's the second time a UFO joke has been made. That's an ashtray. What do you think about the rug? Poor thing! What you did to that tiger is awful! Oh, that's fake it better be restaurants will take forever to fulfill your bottomless drink orders so order them all up front cool last month's schedule is written on the board hot spring sommelier sommelier <laughs> exam okay that's an expensive looking ring why do you care yeah why do i care can i have it what can i have the ring why would i give it to you we're bros now. Hey, can I have the ring? Absolutely, of course you can. Here, take it. Wait, 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 wait. no. I, I can't give you this. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> you're so cheap. <laughs> Come on, it's not like you're losing it. It's exactly like I'm losing it. <laughs> Aw. You guys are a good team. Like siblings. We both like to blackmail people. <laughs> Technically, we all like to blackmail people in this game. Where are you goons? They're out. Looking for Renju. Oh, yay. Besides, I can't have them here seeing me like this. Good point. They can't know that I'm an idol fan. About Renju. What happened to Mr. Okiura? I heard he escaped the hospital. So did I. But I don't know anything more than that. Please tell me! Renju's escape from the hospital was strange. Three things stuck out to me. I laid out the facts. Yuzuki was lured to the place where Shoko's body was found by a message sent from Renju's phone. I found Iris's body in Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. Earlier today, Renju fled with a prisoner escaping a life sentence, an assassin named Number 89. Hold up. What were you saying about Tessa's dead body? Oh, well... Date saw a parallel world with my dead body in it! A parallel world? Never heard of it? Oh, yeah! Of course I am! <laughs> Mom was like, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Parallel worlds and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand it, but I suppose he does. Good, because I don't feel like explaining it. But why would Mr. Okira do that? I don't know. He could be a hostage or an accomplice. Hmm. 
Either way, I need to find him. Sorry, we're not dating. Sorry for bringing you here. I it's okay. You don't have to be scared, Tessa. He's like, I never hurt you. We're not thugs. We're just a gang. What's the difference? Did his pupils get bigger? About as contradictory as meatless beef. The old boss <laughs> was really violent. They really did. He would take a cheese grater to someone yeah, who look. looked at him funny. It's the same fistin. Maybe, maybe because they work together, he adopted the mannerisms. I don't know. <laughs> was he Toby into fisting? <laughs> Sorry. But after I took over, we went crystal clean. Crystal? Methamphetamines. No, we don't do drugs. We don't deal with that stuff. We had to restructure the whole operation. Cut a lot of people off. Ooh. Cut? Their throats. <laughs> No! Not like that! You know what? I agree. We do make a good team. <laughs> Alright, here's Momo, by the way. Oh yeah, I haven't introduced this old man yet. I'm 24! No way. Momo is lying. He is at least 48. <laughs> oh god! And you really like Tesla and she's 18. Okay, okay, okay. Uh... <laughs> Sorry for not introducing myself. <laughs> His eyes went big again. My name is Moma Kumakura. I work for a prestigious advertising agency. Yeah, yeah. You run the Kumakura gang, right? You're like a mob boss. How did you know that? Is he stupid? <laughs> We're all stupid. Oh, we keep going. Moma may not look it, but he's a huge ASET fan. Is he going to do the wet sweat ASAP? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm a huge fan. Do it. Gambling. Bet. Debt. ASAP. <laughs> Woo! Worries. Oh, she's really into it. Uh, forget. Fred ASAP. Now what does she say? ASAP, you bet! <laughs> wow, my catchphrase. Thank you. <laughs> this this is kind of embarrassing. But sorry, Moma. I don't like gangsters. Oh god, you're breaking his heart. <gasps> <laughs> We're, uh, I don't like gangsters either. Gangsters are awful. All those nasty Yakuza guys should drop dead, am I right? <laughs> Sorry, bro. I know this must be such a hard blow for you. <laughs> Alright, summarize for me. Anyway, Moma, take care of Iris for me. Yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> what? What? Wait! You're leaving me here? You'll be safe with him. Uh... <laughs> um... Are you serious? Look at his face! Not to mention he runs a crime syndicate. What if he sells me to the highest bidder? Tessa, I would never do that. I told you, we're clean now. We all go home on time. We follow government regulations. See ya. Wait, what about Shovel Forge? I told you, I never promised to play with you. But you promised me a date. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? What's this? Stop it. <laughs> Is this true? Of course, of course. You son of a bitch. Yeah, what if I am? <laughs> what are you gonna do about it, huh? <laughs> oh god, no, wait! <laughs> I'm gonna ignore that. Good idea. Dante, you're gonna look for Mr. Okiura, right? <laughs> We're gonna ignore that he has a gun. Take me with you. If you do, I'll tell you about last night. Oh yeah. Her late night visitor. Where'd you go? All right, sorry, Mama. <laughs> Deals off. Yay! Dante, don't ignore me. A clean gang. Oh, that's just a 
toy. Yeah, for intimidation. Oh, just a toy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so funny. <laughs> Let's leave them alone for a while. We have two places to check. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume Shrine. Let's go, maids. I want to go to the warehouse, too. Let's go see Miku. Where you found my dead body. Something bothering you? No, I'm just curious. Oh, and one more thing. Can we eat somewhere? Food sounds good. I haven't eaten in a while. Oh, let's see. This is a date, I guess. Oh, my chest burps. I'm getting hard to breathe. What's wrong with you? Are you jealous? Is that what it is? All right. Well, bye, Momo. <gasps> Let's go, Miku! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go to the maid cafe. I don't think I ever want to go to a maid cafe in real life. <laughs> I saw her familiar face as I entered. It was Mizuki. <gasps> Mizuki! Iris and I sat at Mizuki's table. Mizuki, what are you doing here? Oh! Wow. This is my goodness. Is that like the top level trying it? Oh my goodness. What's going on here? Why are you two together? Don't say it like that. Oh, well, it's... Forget it. Thanks for letting me stay last night. Oh, no trouble at all. Anytime. You can even live with me if you want. <laughs> That's a great idea. No, come back. The roommate I have right now really sucks. Hey! <laughs> you know I love you. <laughs> you know, I'm just noticing now. Look at her thighs. She really got the thigh high squish going on. Holy crap. Hello. Oh my god, yes. Hello. Those are some nice hip bones. <laughs> Hell yeah, let's do it again. Whee! Look, the better it gets. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's keep going. Hey, Miku. Wow. Those are some gorgeous hips. Donna, you blew it. Stupid, stupid man. Stupid. Uh, my hips? Oops. I said that out loud. You are now officially a creep. Damn. <laughs> That's too bad. Let's do it again anyway. <laughs> My right at Sunfish Pocket has fantastic hips. I'm just saying, that's a really nice pelvis. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's the same now. Mizuki! What are you doing here? What are you gonna do? Scold me or something? Why nope. do you care what I do? Oh man. Why are you so angry? I'm not angry. In fact, I'm feeling good. Um... Excuse me. Yes? The mermaid took me to the corner of the store. Everyone's taking me to the corner of the room, huh? <laughs> Mizuki was crying earlier. Wow, what is this perspective? Why do you look so tiny? Crying? Yes. We were trying to cheer her up. Oh. What happened to her mom was... And we thought she was having a hard time. She must have come here looking for company. Oh man. That's probably why she stayed with Iris last night. She didn't want to be alone. Shoko's body is still under the jurisdiction of the police. There has not been a ceremony, nor has the body been cremated. The culprit has not been caught, and we cannot locate Renju. And on top of that, her roommate has abandoned her. Well, <laughs> I... Yeah, I guess so in this timeline. I did not abandon her. In any case, there are many ways you could calm Mizuki down. Mizuki is just trying to act strong. Please, try to understand. You're a nice girl. You know, I just said I wouldn't go to a maid cafe, but like, I, I kind of dig the theme, like the pun with the mermaids and stuff like that. It's pretty cute. <laughs> I don't know if, about this outfit in real life, but in, in game it looks pretty cool. <laughs> about the Okir Fishery Warehouse. Hit <laughs> fishy. Why are you asking me about that? I was just curious. 
Maybe that's why this is fish themed, because they had a fish warehouse. That company was made by my grandpa, but daddy has nothing to do with it. I don't know anything about the warehouse. I thought I told you this already. Don't ask me the same questions over and over. Date, look. Oh! She's lying? Possibly. She may just be excited or upset. Hmm. Wait a second. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. I I'm just like, I just put this together, but I don't know how it makes sense. Mizuki Somnium is the one where we saw Iris's dead body, right? So, if she's lying about not knowing about the warehouse, what? Could she have seen the body before? And that's why it's in her song. I don't know how that makes sense though. But then the whole thing about her being dead there doesn't make sense. Okay, I... I need more information, I guess. About Renju. The police asked me a bunch of questions. But I don't know where he is. He hasn't contacted you, has he? Uh, hey customers. He looks bored on the outside. But I bet he's nervous as hell. I understand, man. I do. You're just waiting for the right time. You act cool, but on the inside. What? Where are you going with this, Date? Other mermaids are working hard. Those two shells on their chests are working hard too in their own way. <laughs> Can I look at your trident? No? It's a really good one, isn't it? Keep at it, girls. <laughs> oh, Date's dialogue is fun. Hey, Iris. About Renju. Mr. Okira helped me when I was just starting out. You know how my mom is single? Yes. He really supported her. You know, I'm single too, so uh... He even changed my diaper when I was a little baby. I got hired by Lemniscape all because of him. Iris used to stream all her own content. Like singing and dancing and gaming and stuff. But before we knew it, she went viral. Wow. Right, I heard about that. That's how she started getting offers, right? But because Iris's mom knows Renju, she decided to go with Lemniscape. But there's more to it than that. There are other reasons. Daddy was totally taken in by her talent. Mm. Her talent? Dancing, really. Her dancing is what got her into Lemniscape. He knew ever since she was young that she would be talented. He didn't want any other agencies to have her. I didn't know that. Daddy's not the type to give compliments. Are you the ultimate dancer? <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing. I didn't know he thought of me that way. Oh, that's kind of cute. Store's menu. What's that? Nyotai Mori. <laughs> Eating sushi off a naked woman for 780 yen? Whoa. Is that what it is? Let's go. <laughs> We're going. I made up my mind and my heart. Oh, that sign is wrong. Someone added letters. No! Dante's like my dreams. Ruined. It's supposed to say, Me tell you Mori. Boiled Newt. What? Nita Imori. Boiled Newt. Oh. <laughs> Boiled Newt, 780 yen. Honestly, that's almost as intriguing as the body sushi. Interesting. Mutes aren't even fish. <laughs> uh, you like cream soda too? I remember when she called me childish for ordering cream sodas. Who's childish now? You like dancing, right? More than sleeping and eating! Well, maybe about the same as eating. Anyway, I've always loved moving my body, ever since I was a little girl. Your mom told me about that. And you're fast, too. Yeah, I did a lot of track meets. Oh, so you're good at running, right. <laughs> Were you always the anchor? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Hey, wanna hear something cool? Iris is the goddess of rainbows in Greek mythology. Oh my goodness, of course. She's the messenger of the gods. She's really fast. Rainbows being so fast to disappear was the source of the legend. 
You're as fast as your namesake, then. Hmm. Didn't know that. You want to race? <laughs> sure. When we get the chance. Dante, like, trips and fools on his ass. <laughs> Could you show me your dance? Oh, am I gonna see it? Right here? Oh, I want to see too. Me too. I would also like to see that. Mm, I don't know. Come on, just show us. Oh god, Mizuki, you are very threatening with that. <laughs> but... Alright, I'll go set up. Oh, thank you, Miku. Wait! The mermaid didn't listen and hurried off. This is really Jeez. obvious. Fine, if you insist. You gonna Yay! dance? Oh, Mizuki's happy though. Oh! Alright, world! Get ready! See my dance! Invincible Rainbow Arrow! Hit it! Oh, that's the song in her YouTube channel. I've heard this before. Oh gosh, I'll be actually gonna see the full like... I remember the lyrics were kinda nonsense. <laughs> oh my god, the guy in the back. Teacups that are flying, on maps mystifying. You'll think that I'm lying, this old tale of mine. Yeah, woo! <laughs> hey, she's not lip syncing. A permanent fire, cold frost on the pyre. Fruit never expires, you've seen in your eyes. She's got blue seashells on her boots. Sorry. Even with the devils of time against you, never let the fire fade in you. See the golden goddess with wings of rainbows that sail through the night sky to embrace you. Resist all of your heart to take you. Never let the sparks of this world erase you. Passing down the light of the torch to guide you. Okay, I'm not I'm not sure about that, but <laughs> she sings as well as I do, which is not very good. <laughs> that song. Mr. Okira wrote the music and I wrote the lyrics. You wrote the lyrics? They don't make any sense, girl. <laughs> yeah, I could, I remember when I first heard that song on the YouTube channel when they were doing all the like advertising for this game. My first impression was like Wow, she's not an amazing singer. <laughs> but I mean, ew, you know, we're on the same level. <laughs> it's okay. If your dancing is what got you famous, uh, it definitely wasn't the singing, at least in my opinion. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, great job. That was fun. So it holds a special place in my heart. So he wrote the music. That's one of his hobbies, isn't it? Yeah. He enjoys songwriting. Cool. That's right. I forgot he wrote music. Yeah, he's really talented. I look up to him. He's done so much for me. I know I can rely on him more than anyone else. So do you mind explaining what your lyrics mean? Because <laughs> sound like nonsense to me. I thought you visited her last night. Iris, I still need to know. Who was it? What were you doing Sunday at 2 a.m.? You haven't fulfilled your promise. This is the date. I fulfilled my promise. I told you. No info until the date is complete. Man, this sucks. Don't you get it? This date isn't over yet. Do you know this mermaid? Do you know Miku? Do you know Hatsune Miku? She's my friend from back when I worked here. We would hang out outside of work, too. We go to haunted places and UFO sightings and stuff. Oh, that's in your profile. Blow those boys away! Blow those boys away! What? <laughs> yeah, blow those boys! 
no, 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 no. Mizuki, uh... You really shouldn't say that. <laughs> She's like, what? Just because I'm a kid? <laughs> well, what do you have to say? Was Renju here? I've heard that Renju was sighted here. When do you mean? When? I got the info a few minutes ago, but I don't know when he was seen. Oh. Ringing any bells? Well, he hasn't come by today, but yesterday. Yesterday? But I was here yesterday. It was after that. Hey, Ota. After you and Ota left. Why didn't you tell me sooner? You didn't ask. And I don't have any way to contact you. Ah, damn it. <laughs> damn it. We just missed him. That's not your fault. Okay, tell us more though. What was he doing here? He was looking for Iris. Oh. He was asking everyone where she was. Looking for me? Yeah. Did he give a reason? No, not in particular. Iris, can you think of why he would be looking for you? No, not at all. Mizuki? I don't know either. Strange. Anything else you can tell me about Renju? Anything else? Well, he did seem really sick. <laughs> yeah, all that internal bleeding will do that though. He was pale and sweating a lot. Must have been because of the accident. Perhaps. I'm really confused. Why is Renju so suspicious right now? Uh, what do you what do you like in men? Well, a triple wart sea devil or an anacanthus verbatus. My goodness, I don't know what to say. That's a mouthful. About your relationship with Mizuki. Mizuki comes here a lot. She's really friendly with everyone. I like it here. Everyone treats me nice. Is it because you're the daughter of the owner? No, it's not like that. We're BFFs! She wields extraordinary power with that trident. The Okiura family is really something else. How much money have you spent at this cafe to get this? Or did they just give it to you? Alright, you know what? Summarize for me, Mizuki. Unfortunately, we didn't find Renju here. But we discovered that he was looking for Iris. But why? We can think about that later. Well, if he's looking for Iris, I assume... Renju isn't the one who came to see her at 2? Then? Hmm. Let's get going. Yeah, you're right. What am I missing here? Doorway to the kitchen. Kitchen window. You can see the kitchen back there. You wanker! Do you not know how to prepare a monk feast? Sorry, chef. You idiot sandwich! <laughs> This is a real interesting place. Well then, I suppose we shall get going. Goodbye, Miss Miku and your wonderful little hips. And uh, bye Mizuki, I guess. Come on Iris, I guess we gotta keep going. Cause you won't tell me information. Looks like nighttime now. Oh. You okay? <laughs> it's okay. I just, uh, missed a step there. Wow. Huh. She kind of fainted-ish when we were at Bloom Park way earlier. Are you okay? Is she sick or something? About Renju. Mr. Okura isn't here. I mean, of course he isn't. It's not like we came here right away. He's already taken off. Too bad. It looks like there are no further clues here. Well, that sucks. It appears we've wasted our time. Your thoughts? Penny? It's nostalgic. Penny for your thoughts? 
This place is a memorable one for me. Six years ago, I used to come here with someone. Yeah, and I have a memory of that. Somehow? Someone? I used to call him uncle. Mr. Falco. He was a thoughtful, reliable man. I thought of him as a father. But one day, he just disappeared. She's talking about... Hitomi's lover. Ah, but in this route, we don't know that it was Falco. About this uncle. When you asked me why I became an idol, I wasn't being entirely truthful. I told you that it was because I wanted to become famous. But more specifically, it was for uncle. I've been looking for him for six years. Whoa. Okay. But I didn't find him anywhere. I didn't know where else to look. So instead of me finding him, I thought that he could find me instead. Well, I mean, you haven't moved. <laughs> you still live with Hitomi, and she's lived there like her whole life. So... If he wanted to find you, he would just go back? Right? <laughs> you think if you became famous, he'd contact you? Yeah. So that is why she became an idol. Hmm, okay. I mean, it's also been my dream since I was little. That's a part of it, too. So why do you use the name Asa? Shouldn't you use your real name? Oh no, I don't have to. He was the one who came up with the name Asa. Really? He told me that if I ever became an idol, I should use that name. Why? About this shrine. It's called Ikume Iribiko Isachi no Mikoto. Or sometimes, Ikume Tenno, or Ikume no Mikoto. That's a lot of names. There are legends about this place written in the old text. It's a shrine dedicated to the gods. The old legend goes like this. One day, Ikume Iribiko sent one of his followers, Taji Momori, on an urgent quest. To find a mysterious, magical fruit. A fruit called Tokijiku no Kaku. Looks like an orange. It's said that eating it will grant you immortality. Or a mandarin. After many hardships, Taji Momori was able to find the fruit. But by the time he got back, Ikume Iribiko had died. Oh. Taji Momori mourned. He handed half of the fruit to the man's wife, and he left the other half on Ikume Iribiko's grave, then died on the spot. Oh. <laughs> okay, wow. It is said that that fruit is still inside the shrine behind us. Really? A fruit of immortality? Yes. Immortality, huh? Not interested? No, not really. I'd rather have normality than immortality. I think so, too. What are you looking at? A flower over there. Flower? Like here? You can't see it from here, can you? I know it's there because I've been to this shrine before. What is Iris looking at? I'm curious about the flower Iris is looking at. Oh, do I have to actually... Flower. Night vision? An iris. Of course. More specifically, a winter iris. Of course. <laughs> this is the same flower that was on display at Iris's house. A winter iris. So an iris, huh? You're looking at a winter iris, aren't you? Yeah. How did you know? It's the same kind that's at my house. I told you about what it means, right? Uh, hope and... Good news, I think. Good news and hope. Yeah! Iris is also a part of the Eye. And the Greek goddess of rainbows. A messenger goddess. I told you at Sunfish Pocket, right? That's why the flower means good news and hope. Alright, summarize. Date, we have no time to waste. We should get moving. Got it. Are you feeling okay? She was dizzy again. Cold storage warehouse. Alright, this is where we saw your dead body. Or where I saw your dead body. I saw it. I'm sure. 
Your corpse, Iris. Right here. But I'm here now. Maybe I'm a ghost. You don't look like a floating sheet. You have legs. But maybe they're not legs. Maybe they're my boobs. Uh... I tried to picture Iris's breasts swing down there like that. What? And then I decided not to. Yeah. Didn't you say that you saved me in your dream? What the? <laughs> what did you mean by that? I told you that I'm with an organization called Abyss, right? Yeah, you told me two days ago. We find clues in the minds of suspects and witnesses. We enter what we call Somnium, a dream world projected by their subconscious. I thought this was a secret. Why are we telling her? That's what the entire organization is about. We're gonna tell a internet idol and she could leak this information. She's like, conspiracy theory, guys! How do you even do that? We have a machine that we call the sync machine. I bet you gonna stop me? What is that? It's a sync machine. That's not an explanation! Tell me how it works! Well, um, I can explain, but it will require a bit of background to understand. Background? Well, before we do that, I don't know why Iba's not making me stop. Pew pew pew! Thanks, Cyrus. What the hell? The box made me think of, like, a giant robot. A what? You know, from kaiju movies. Again, what? Part of a box on the floor. That caramel over there looks so good! Yeah, you're right. Go eat it. But if I tried to eat it in one bite, I'd break my jaw. What are you talking about, Date? That's a cardboard box. You started... <sighs> Never mind. <laughs> Alright. Nice cutting machine. Hey, uh, you got chopped up by that thing one time. Switchboard... Hey, get out of my house! What the hell? I'm a poltergeist inside the circuit board. What? You said I was a ghost, right? Maybe I'm haunting the warehouse with spooky astral projections. I like that delivery. <laughs> what are you talking about, Iris? All right. Well, how how do you like this A-set oil drum? Hi, I'm Jemimon. Okay, we made this joke twice now. You too. <laughs> yes. Workbench. So my corpse was on here? Yep. Yeah. Workbench. There's nothing on it now. Are you cold? Your bare legs, man. Do you know about nanotechnology? Oh, goodness. Nanotech? Yeah! Technology related to really small things. Like, really teeny tiny things. And when they make a machine... They're called nanomachines. I heard they use them a lot for medical and tech fields. Some of the cutting-edge nanomachines can even go inside your body and cure illnesses. They can even cure cancer! And they go, beep, beep, beep. That's what mom said. Well, I don't know if it was like, beep, beep, or rrr, rrr. But anyway, nanotechnology costs tons of money. Only a few people can even afford it. My college professor said only the richest of the rich have nanotechnology. But he's pretty liberal, so... Largely accurate. Nano is a prefix meaning 10 to the negative 9th power. A nanometer is therefore 0 0.00000001 meters. Gosh, that is tiny. The sync machine uses machines approximately 2.16 nanometers long. Viruses are on average 20 to 970 nanometers, so sync nanomachines are far smaller than that. This allows them to access neural circuitry. During a sync, the nanomachines are used to write in the sinker's data. Uh, do you know about the BBB? What's that? <laughs> I've heard of it. The blood brain barrier, right? Inside the school, there's an army of little teeny tiny soldiers that surround the brain. This is weird. Why do you know all this stuff? They protect the brain from bad stuff in the blood, right? That's almost it. Yeah. The blood-brain barrier describes the architecture of the microvessels of the brain. It is a kind of shield that protects the brain. To get through, 
An object must be no larger than 0.4 nanometers. Objects too large to slip through the barrier cannot physically access the brain. Is this real? <laughs> At this point, I'm like, what? what is real info and what isn't real? <laughs> Do you know about the Wajet system? You're very knowledgeable. I guess not. Oh, never mind. No, I know what it is. Oh, okay. It's the core programming behind AI, right? That's right. What? You're shivering. Well, yeah, look at her legs. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Hmm? To borrow Pewter's explanation, with the advent of the Wadjet system, we can extract the data of the human psyche. This data is sent to the brain, which achieves the sync. Honestly, I don't know how this works. I can't understand it, but sure. Oh, cool. Thank you. Are you going to explain it to me? Okay. You have the basics down. Let me explain how syncing works. Sinkers like me equip the sync gear and use it to access the subject's brain. Inside the helmet are nano cables. And on the tip of each of these cables is a special nano machine. But the machine can't reach the brain through blood alone. Do you know why? The BBB soldiers say, go away, and push them back? Well, yeah, kind of. But for the sink to work, we have to get the nanomachines into the brain itself. Oh. How do we do that? Drill a hole in the skull? No. In Shovel Forge, you can use a pickaxe, and... No, it has nothing to do with tools. We don't have to open a hole. Skulls already have holes in them. One of those holes is the optic canal, which is a nerve canal located behind the eyes. Are we sending things behind our eyes when we sink? Whoa! The nano cables of the sink gear go through your eyes. Whoa! Well, I guess it's easier for you because technically this eye is already hollow <laughs> if you just take out Iba. But whoa! Ooh, that sounds really weird to me. <laughs> then go to the back of your eye socket. Then through the optic canal to the sea. The sea? The sea of brain cells, anyway. That sounds kind of romantic. Uh... It's only a chunk of protein. Once the nanocables arrive at their destination, they can begin the sync process. They slide into the brain like roots of a tree. And on the tip of each cable, the nanomachine sends and receives data. This is controlled by the Wadjet system, and that's how the sinker and the subject exchange information. Exchange? Think of it this way. The human brain has a max capacity of one psyche, one consciousness. Multiple instances of consciousness inside one brain can cause a total collapse of higher brain functions. You know how a car only has one steering wheel? If there were two, there would be accidents all over the place. Well, don't some planes have two control sticks? Okay, eh, maybe it wasn't the best metaphor. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that the human body can only hold one person. If you try to have two people inside one brain, it will break. I see. Hmm. Is that why it's dangerous to sink for more than, well, six minutes? Because of this, the sinker's data goes inside the subject's brain. And the only thing inside the subject's mind at the time of the sink are their memories. Like a house with no one inside. We sinkers break into the house, look for clues, and leave. Hmm. All within six minutes. Thank you. That, that metaphor actually made more visual sense to me. There's a time limit? Yes. Or else, the house will collapse on our heads. The neural circuits would become too deeply entwined with one another. To put it simply, the sinker would be trapped inside the subject's house. Mm. Thank you for explaining it! Yeah, for me too. Although I don't know why <laughs> we explained it to you. I don't completely understand how sync works, but still. Just don't tell anyone. This is extremely confidential. It's okay, I won't. Date, tell me this. Hmm? Who did you sync with yesterday? Didn't I show you his picture? Congressman So Sejima. So that's why you know so much about him. But you've never met him, right? 
I haven't, I swear. Hey, Date. You saw my corpse here, right? Now are you shivering? I did. I'm sure of it. And in so stream, you saved me from getting killed. Yeah. And then somehow, I resurrected. Yeah. What was your alibi, girl? Just tell me already. Hmm. Date, that means you're... Achoo! Date, is the cold too much for Iris? Yeah, I'm freezing too. Iris, let's get out of here for now. Roger that! Oh, we're going all the way out here? I thought we would just leave the warehouse. Okay. Uh, hi, Ota! <laughs> okay, Ota, we're, we're on a date, but it's nothing serious, okay, bro? <laughs> Don't kill me. Ah, I'm so hungry! T tessa Oh, are we actually gonna get food here? Why are you here? I told Date I was hungry, so... I've always wanted to eat here. I'll have my usual, Ota. Y yes right away! Ota flew into the kitchen. He's not questioning why I'm here. Iris watched him go and took a seat. Oh, that's kind of nice. Hi, Oto. Where's your mom? She's in the living room. I think she's watching TV. How about you? What are you doing here? I was just doing some meditation. Lying on the ground. He means sleeping. Date, why are you with Tessa? All right, now you ask. <laughs> we are on a date. Not Shovel Forge. On a date. Oh, a date. Huh. A date? <laughs> I'm on an investigation, and she wouldn't let me go. <laughs> He's not impressed. Date, I have some delicious fugu eggs. I promise they're not poisoned. Would you like some? No, thank you. <laughs> no thanks. I'm fine. What's fugu? Is that puffer fish? Where's Renju? You're still looking for him? Well, like I told you before, I don't know. Mm, you're good at cooking, huh? Yeah, my dad taught me when I was little. You're making me something too, right? Sure, my treat, Date. <gasps> Yay! Thanks, Oda. That's very nice of you. Just don't poison me, okay? Lucky cat. Meow. <gasps> Yay! Let's do that again. Meow. 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 Huh? What are you doing? Oh, you don't know? It's good luck to imitate a cat in front of one of these. Really? Meow? 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 M meow? <laughs> Guess I'll have good luck! Ah, oh, Ota didn't do it. Well, I'm gonna win no chair. Dante, a Martian! That's just a stool. Condiment? Salt, pepper, a blend of red cayenne and spices, and an unidentified liquid. Mayumi's juice with mold? Ew! Poster. Beer, Date, you're drooling. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, I'm just really hungry. I was about to say the same thing. Oh my god. TV. Hey, Date, I've got this video of girls in bikinis washing this armored car. Wanna watch? Right in front of Tessa? <laughs> Absolutely not. Why does Ota keep wanting to watch uh, porn with me? Hey, look, it's a mop. And a bucket. Hey, Tessa. Could you kick that bucket there? Why? Uh, sure. Like this? <laughs> yeah, but more. Like this? <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome! This is weird. <laughs> I did not realize there was someone more perverted than Date. <laughs> <laughs> What's with you and buckets, huh, Oto? 
Oh, that's Payashi Samba's Hayashi Vangole. Holy crap. Who? It's Juko and Oshimo. That's kind of cute that the photo is just like out here now since we're not focusing on them on the route. That's cute. Cordless phone. Ring ring. Who's on the phone? Who cares? Wow, thanks. <laughs> She's like, I don't care, Date. Cushion. Small city Date, cushion. Date, wanna have a pillow fight? Uh, Tessa, not in the store, please. It's clock. Hey, what has two hands on its face? A mom playing peekaboo! Uh, yeah, exactly! What's your usual? Omelette rice! Of course it is. Ota's omelette rice is so good it gives me stomach cramps. Is that a good thing? Is that a compliment? <laughs> <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Well, Ota appears to have taken it as a compliment. About Iris's resurrection. Iris, about your coming back to life. Hold it! What do you mean, coming back to life? Uh... I decided to tell Oda about Iris' resurrection. Date jumped into a parallel world where I'm still alive! Tessa... died? Yep. You're taking this very, uh, casually. About the parallel world. Hey. Can you tell me about this parallel world idea in more detail? Oh, sure! How should I explain this? Well... Wow, this episode, we've been with you this whole time. This is really a, a Tessa episode, eh? Um... Oh, I know! Let's play rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah! If we tie, nothing happens. We just shake hands. If I win, you have to give me something. What if I win? I'll do anything. A anything? Does I know? Mm-hmm. Anything. Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. Date, your heart rate is rapidly increasing. Why exactly is that? I but shut up. All right, let's do this. Holy crap. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Ota. One, two, three, shoot. Ooh, what should I throw out? Um. Uh... Let's throw out a pair of scissors for victory. Shoot! Well, never mind, I lost. Yay, I won! Oh, no, 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 you see, this this looks like scissors, but it's actually paper. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. No, why did I throw out scissors? Why? You're really not taking this well. Aw, oh, man. So, I get my prize! I don't have any money. I don't want money. Instead... Yeah. I wonder if that's scripted, like you won't win anyway. Can you pet my head and say Iris is a cutie cutie? Oh, never mind. This is fine. Uh, don't I do it. The cutest person in the whole wide world? A cutie angel? Just go for it, Dottie. Fine. Iris is a cutie cutie. Ota doesn't look very happy right now. No, no, no! Put your heart into it! Iris is a cutie cutie, the cutest person in the whole wide world. A cutie angel. <laughs> Iris is a cutie cutie, the cutest person in the whole wide world. A cutie angel. Dante's voice actor is doing a great job. I repeated the whole thing while pinning Iris on the head. <laughs> We just played rock, paper, scissors, right? I won and you pet me. But in a different timeline, maybe we tied. Or maybe I obeyed your orders and did something really scandalous. Rewind time, do it now! All right, you got it, Date. Let's do it right now. <laughs> As you wish, Date, let's go. <laughs> I, I am curious to see if there's any difference. One, two, three, shoot! All right, so she threw out a rock. Let's do that as well. I want to see what Shoot. it is if I tie. Oh, it is the same then. A tie. The most boring result. Well, we agreed on the rules. Let's shake hands. Shaky, shaky. I shook hands with Iris. We just played rock, paper, scissors, right? 
We tied and shook hands. But in a different timeline, maybe I got a reward from you. Or maybe you could have seen me naked or something. Oh my lord. Why did I choose rock? <laughs> what exactly were you going to make her do? Now I'm super curious. So those timelines are what I'd call a parallel world. Alright, let's go back. I need to know. <laughs> my curiosity must be fulfilled. Alright, let's go with paper this time. And I'm gonna win. Shoot! Yeah! Dante's like, Fuck! Yeah! <laughs> Oh, well, I think that was worth it. <laughs> Date, calm down. You're going to pop a blood vessel. Aw, I lost. But I made a promise. What do you want me to do? Uh, um, if it's no trouble, I want to see your... No! See what? L let me see. See. I will kill you if you say it. See... Uh, seal. I, I meant seal. Seal? Not the smoothest recovery. Oh, I get it. You want to see me imitate a seal. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> no, no, Iris, please. Okay, well, here it goes, I guess. Tessa, what are you doing? Uh, we just played rock, paper, scissors, right? Good job, good job. <laughs> you won, and you made me be a seal for some reason. But in a different timeline, maybe we tied. Or maybe I got a prize from you. If I had chosen rock or paper... So those timelines are what I'd call a parallel world. Mm. So you think I jumped from a world in which you were dead to this one where you're alive? That's what I think. Huh. Parallel world, huh? Now, if we're talking about Uchikoshi, we're gonna go, like, uh, morphogenetic fields or whatever. <laughs> I can't believe it, but... Sure you can. Parallel worlds exist. Do you know about the Mandela effect? Or the Booba Kiki effect? Booba. <laughs> or the 100 million balls? Balls? Can you explain that, would you believe me? What's that bulls one? Sounds really interesting, Tessa. Oh god, of course you would say that too. I know some urban legends like that. Oh? The spatial temporal man, and the lost friend, and the story of two sisters. What is going on? I've heard people talking about it. The booba kiki effect? <laughs> booba! Dante, look at this picture! Look at this picture! I just pulled up a picture on her phone. There's a famous experiment regarding this picture. Right. This one's Booba and this one's Kiki. It's because of like the sound. Booba is like more smooth or less harsh and Kiki sounds spiky because it's a very sharp sound. You show this image to people around the world and ask a question. Which one is Booba and which one is Kiki? Booba Kiki. Believe it or not, 98% of people asked have the same answer. The rounder one is Booba. And the jagged one is Kiki. Booba. Isn't that weird? In other words, everyone thinks that Booba is a certain way, and Kiki is the other. It applies universally across languages and cultures. It's like something ingrained inside all humans. Booba Kiki effect? Like worshipping the sun and the sea. Or thinking that the mother is soft and the father is jagged. Hmm. Regardless of your culture or background, you probably think this way. It's what Jung called the collective unconscious. Everyone is just smart. They, they know so much information about random topics. <laughs> there exists a second psychic system of a collective universal and impersonal nature, which is identical in all individuals. That's what Jung said about it. Think of it like bamboo. Bamboo stalks look like individual plants since they're separated. But underground, they're all connected. Human psyches might be like that too, connected at a subconscious level. I didn't know that about bamboo. That's... The parallel world? Yeah! You saved me in the dream, right? And dreams are all about our subconscious minds. So if you follow the roots... You get to another bamboo stalk. Yeah, something like that. 
cool. A <laughs> hundred million bulls? This world is full of really interesting stuff. But you know the most interesting thing of all? No, what? These nuts! <laughs> that humans exist at all! The universe developed in a very particular way to get here. If things were even slightly different, well, the galaxies and solar system and all of that might not have existed at all. And that means humans would never be born. And even if everything happened exactly like that, the probability of human life developing is extremely low. And yet, here we are. So what about the 100 million bulls, huh? Imagine a box full of ping pong balls, labeled one to a hundred million. Would you be able to pick out the one? Not likely. But what if there were 100 million of you? Well, then one of us would definitely pick up the one. Exactly! The birth of humanity is so improbable that it's basically a miracle. But if there were multiple universes... That's actually pretty cool. I like this theory. <laughs> then it wouldn't be strange that at least one of them had humans in it. She is describing the anthropic principle. I wonder what kind of parallel worlds I'm living in. I may have underestimated her intelligence. Mandela effect? Do you know Nelson Mandela? I'd know about this one. Well, yeah! The former president of South Africa. He helped abolish apartheid. He died in 2013, but a strange thing happened. When the news broke, people all over the world thought, didn't Mandela die in prison in 1980? That's the Mandela effect. It's when your memory and history have discrepancies. There are lots of examples, like the name of this kid's book with the bears having different spellings. Or people remembering that Kennedy was assassinated in a four-seat car. But in our world, he was in a six-seat car. Huh. I thought it was a four-seater, too. Or that electric mouse from that video game. You probably remember the tip of its tail being black. Pikachu. <laughs> it wasn't? Nope. It's all yellow. And the design didn't change. Oh. It's kind of interesting uh, when they refer to, like, real-world events in this video game as if I'm supposed to believe, yes, this is the real world. <laughs> Lines from movies, company logos, historical events, and little things. The Mandela Effect is everywhere. Why do you think that is? Because those memories are from parallel worlds? That would explain it, I guess. Cool. Alright, Odo, what do you have to say? My goodness. So many stories. Yeah, it's sort of like a common experience. <laughs> I guess I should look at you. A lot of people have experienced waking up in an uninhabited world they've never seen before. And most of them describe seeing the same person. Have you all been isekai'd? <laughs> the Spatial Temporal Man. I've never heard of this. He's supposed to be an ordinary old man wearing work clothes. The Spatial Temporal Man guides people back to the real world. He tells them, this world is not for you, or something. I'd like to meet him someday. What about others? So, this elementary school kid? Let's call him C. He goes to school and there's a bunch of things on the floor. Postcards, towels, a coffee cup, rice bowls, a sink, lots of stuff. But C realized that those were all things from his own house. How did they get to the classroom? No one knows. It's not like anyone did it on purpose or there was a thief or anything. Maybe something happened that made two parallel worlds fuse. What? Yeah, maybe. You guys keep talking and I'm just like, uh, sure. <laughs> so, there's this girl. Let's call her B. She's practicing piano in her room. And her little sister is watching TV in the same room. B asks her to turn the TV volume down so she can hear her piano playing, you know? So B goes back to practicing, playing a little bit. But her sister doesn't turn the volume down. She's not listening at all. So B turns around to scold her. She was really gonna let her sister have it. But she's gone. She's nowhere to be seen. 
she thinks, Huh, I wonder where she went. But then, B hears her sister at the door. I'm home! B runs to the front door and sees her sister and her parents standing there. So B asks, When did you go outside? I feel like I'm listening to a podcast. My goodness. But her mom says, What are you talking about? She went shopping with me. Maybe I was right. Maybe you are like a conspiracy theorist um, kind of idol. Maybe that's what your podcasts are about. B is really confused by all of this, of course. She asks her little sister about it, and she learns that her favorite TV show was on. And before she went shopping with her mom, she was deciding whether or not she wanted to stay and watch it or not. So depending on her decision, a parallel world was made. Yeah, what B saw might have been from the world where her sister stayed behind. The lost friend? There's this kid, A. He's in elementary school. Well, A had this close friend named Suzuki. One day, after school, they're walking home together. A turns around to tell Suzuki a joke, and Suzuki is laughing his butt off. And he's laughing and laughing, and he laughs so hard that his eyes fall out of their sockets. What? the hell is this story? What? Well, they were hanging down out of his eye sockets. The nerves were still connected, but... Ah! A is of course in shock and doesn't know what to do. Suzuki just takes his eyeballs and jams them back into his eye sockets and keeps walking like nothing happened. So A asks him about it. Like, hey, are you okay? Your eyes fell out. A is really concerned for his friend, you know? But Suzuki just says, Yeah, I'm fine. He doesn't say anything about it. And by now, A is really curious. But he's not getting any answers. So, they just part ways and go home. My goodness, if I saw that, I think I would just scream and run away. <laughs> I wouldn't just be like, Whoa, dude, are you okay? <laughs> the story only gets weirder from here. The next day, a goes to school, and Suzuki's not there. A is confused and asks his teacher about oh my it. God, this has got to be like Suzuki never existed. <gasps> hey, where's Suzuki today? <laughs> and the teacher says, Suzuki, who's that? There's no Suzuki in this class. A says, What are you talking about? <laughs> and he goes and asks all of his classmates about Suzuki. They all say the same thing. Who's Rem? <laughs> I don't know him. There's no Suzuki in this class. So that kid must have jumped into a parallel world without Suzuki. That's what I think. Couldn't Suzuki just be an imaginary friend or something? No. A was really serious about remembering Suzuki. It is weird. And there's no way you can pop your eyeballs back in like that. Well, not necessarily. There's such a thing as a dislocated eye. It actually isn't too hard to put your eye back in if it falls out. Ota is correct. Dislocated eyes are easy to replace in their sockets. As long as none of the nerves or blood vessels were damaged, there are usually no lasting negative effects either. I... I don't know. I'm kind of uncomfortable with this kind of stuff. I feel like <laughs> when I was a kid, I told my parents, I was like, I'm never going to be a doctor because I... I can't look at people's insides or stuff like that. Like medical shows, I'll like cover my eyes and like peek through them, but like I'll be like, ah! I don't want to see people's guts. That doesn't guts. prove this Suzuki exists. Well, I guess not, but... Anything else? I know a ton of stories like this. Like being suddenly transported one year into the future. And there's a missing persons report out for you. I bet you go on Reddit or something like that. <laughs> you look down at your phone, but you realize that it's not yours. It's not the one you remember having. You look through the contacts, and it's filled with names you don't recognize. Sounds scary. There's more, too. Like this town where everyone is Japanese. But they're speaking a completely different language. And all the signs and magazines and stuff have different letters. And it's not like Korea or China. It's the Japan we know, but the language is different. Hmm. That's a prime example of a parallel world. 
I feel like this scene has gone on long enough. <laughs> like, I kind of get the point. Please, summarize. When did you two get so knowledgeable? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. No kidding. Tessa is always writing about this stuff on the internet. No way. This is what your podcast is about, isn't it? That's why I decided to research it, too. That's how I learned all this stuff. Oh, hey. I know about conspiracies and secret societies, too. I find that stuff fascinating. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wow, I predicted this outcome. <laughs> if you want, we could talk about those. No thanks, I'm done here. Maybe next time. Uh, now where's that omelet rice? Yes, please, food. Done. I would have brought the dish over. Nice. He laid out an omelet rice in front of me and Iris. Iris grabbed a spoon with a huge smile on her face. Bon appetit. She picked up the spoonful. No, actually, she tried to pick up a spoonful. You dropped your spoon? Whoa, why you look like that? Are you okay? Tessa, are you okay? Maybe she is sick. I'm fine. My hand slipped. Let's eat. Iris and I ate the omelette rice in near silence. That's kind of awkward. Oto, why didn't you make yourself one? <laughs> there was no conversation. Just like the sound of the spoon hitting the plate, the diner echoed with it. And before long... Ah! Thanks for the food! Iris was totally re-energized. Her face was back to her usual easy smile. That was good! Ota, your omelette rice is seriously the best! Yeah, it was actually really good. Yay! Aw, oh, thanks. I owe it to my dad. He taught me well. Aww. Pay for the food and still to go. I thought he said it was his treat! What the heck? Let's get going, Iris. Ota, you lied to me. I thought you said it was your treat. My goodness. Thanks again! Oh well. Thank you! Come back soon! We should pay you anyway. Your mom needs the money. <laughs> How do you even afford all the stuff that you do? Do you have some kind of part-time job? Well, thanks, Oda. See ya. That's <gasps> Mama! Mama! Oh, wait! Was it today that I had to go see... Yeah, we're gonna see Mama. Mama said there was someone who knew Renju, right? Oh, oh, cause oh. <gasps> Mama! Hey, Mama, it's me. Dante, honey, what's up? I'm heading over now. Woohoo! Glad to hear it. Maybe I'll close the place a little early for you. Sorry, but I'm with someone. With someone? A girl named Iris. What? <laughs> Sorry, Mama. Is she a virgin? <laughs> Huh? I'm not gonna answer that. Anyway, remember what we talked about? There's a regular here who was good friends with Ren. They should be here tonight. He? Oh, right. Are they coming tonight? Yes, I promise. Alright, then I'll see you there. Okay, I'll be here. Bye. How are you talking on your phone without earphones? I was too lazy to explain it properly, so I came up with a lie. I have an earpiece implanted in my ear. <laughs> wow, cool! I would ask you the same thing. How do you listen to music without your headphones being over your ears? Another call came in. Date, it's the <gasps> boss. boss! Bad oh, that's about right. This. I'm sorry. I still haven't caught Renju and 89. Okay, Dante, tell me the situation. Did you find number 89? If I did, I would have told you. Aha. Uh -huh. I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. What was that about? That was a cry from deep within my heart, Dante. Do you realize how screwed I am? 
Go find number 89. If I find Renju, I find number 89. I'm gathering information on Renju's whereabouts now. Where? I told her I was going to Marble with Iris, and about who I was expecting to see there. Wait, are you trying to get her drunk? She's not 21. And if she wasn't a minor? Hmm? <sighs> well, whatever. I'm sure you have a good plan. I forget that um, other countries in the world, you have to be 21 to drink. In Australia, uh, if you're 18, you can drink. But, um, I mean, I have not used that privilege. Because <laughs> I don't drink. Find those two and arrest them. Got it? Gotcha. Woo! I didn't have to inspect anything in the car. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Oi, that's nice. <laughs> Golden Yokcho. Hell yeah, let's go see Mama. So this is Golden Yokocho. First time here? Yeah. Marble is right over here. Date, on your six. What? Two suspicious individuals approaching. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god, a knife! Ooh. Ah, oh god. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Did you kill that guy? Is he dead? Oh my god! A sniper! Jesus, what's going Stay on? Stay right like there! Okay! Who's after you, Iris? Are they after me? Damn! Well, this isn't the Kumakuras. Iris, are you okay? Who are they? We can find out later. We need a way out of this. Yeah, but... If I grab Iris and try to run, we'll be shut full of holes. That does not look like a comfortable sitting position. <laughs> the alleyways between the buildings are blocked off. We can't go that way. Which means... Shit! We gotta take care of them! I have reached the same conclusion. But I've only got a single revolver. <laughs> of course, horny power. I see some underwears and a bra here. Oh my goodness. Where is that even? Is that over here? Is that this tiny thing? Are all of these people gonna be stupid and horny? Who am I kidding? Of course they are. It's AI the Somnium Files, baby. Everyone horny and stupid. Let's go, horny stupid power time. Oh my god. Here we go again! Alright, time to be a real gamer now. I will give you instructions. Just move as I tell you. This better work. Not to worry. My calculations are flawless. But my gamer skills are not. What's the plan? You see that hanger over there? God damn it. Shoot the bottom of the hanger with a normal bullet. Why? Don't ask questions, just do it! <sighs> Alright, here we go, here we go, here we go. Just aim, just aim, just aim, just aim. And then press the button. Uh, control! Yeah, baby! Oh my god, bro! Panties! Look at that! Oh! Like a gift from heaven! <laughs> oh my lord! Oh! Hey! How come I didn't get one? And then they fight. <laughs> Get me out, brother! Are they stupid? Yeah. <laughs> Just as I Oh my god. What kind of calculations did you do? It's like, I calculated how horny they are. Date, focus! Now, the burst shot. Shoot the porno mag vending machine. The porno mag? That is like, no! I don't want to destroy the porno mags. I said no questions. Hurry! Shoot the vending machine with the burst. That is like a porno mag vending machine, huh? I'll 
I gotta come back later. <laughs> gotta pick up a copy. Oh gosh. Here we go again. Here we go again. Here we go again. Control! Yeah, baby! Oh no! Oh wait, they all got exploded. <laughs> hey, this is. Oh my god! They're like, oh! This is crazy! Oh my god, titties! I've never seen anything like this before! <laughs> Titties! Whoa! Titties! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, they must be stupid. <laughs> you are too. Yeah. What? The final step. But you don't have to do a thing. Oh? Hello? Mama? Oh, are you imitating my voice? There's a group of naked buff guys dancing outside your bar. There's... What? <laughs> yes! I'm coming out! Don't use my voice without permission. This is an emergency! I will slap you if you don't shut up! Now, we're ready. We just need to use the fire extinguisher. It's loaded with high pressure CO2. Where is it? I don't even see it. Now, I will leave your eye and throw the fire extinguisher into the air. Oh, was it next to ours? Shoot the top of the extinguisher at the perfect time. Now let's go! <laughs> go, guy, bro! Go! Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Look at her. Weep, 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 weep. Oh my, you're so strong. Ready? Iris, are you Here seeing this? <laughs> Did you see my eye just jump out? No. Cool. <laughs> All right, here we go. Woo! The power of horny. Let's go. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Just wow. All according to my calculations. All according to Keikaku. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thanks, Uchikoshi. This was the... <laughs> Thank you for giving us stupid, <laughs> horny guards, henchmen. I don't know. That was amazing. Wait, are we not going into Marvel? This is... Iris, did you see that? <laughs> that was crazy! My place. The building's got a security system. Really? Mizuki got hurt here. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> we'll be safe here. So Mizuki's not home? Doesn't look like it. I checked her phone's GPS. Mizuki is currently at Sunfish Pocket. It's getting late, but Sunfish Pocket should be safe. I'm sure the mermaids are taking good care of her. If anything, she'd be in more danger with us. Iris, I need to talk to you about earlier. What was that? Why are you being attacked? Or am I being attacked? Have a seat wherever. What is going on here? What the hell is going on here? About the unidentified attackers. Iris, those guys who tried to kidnap you. Oh yeah, I guess they were after her. One guy did carry her off for a little bit. Do you have any idea who they were? After a long silence, after a long silence, Iris spoke. There's a reason I asked you to go on a date so many times. Oh, there is? Uh, Alright, maybe now we'll know why she was so insistent on it. I wanted you to protect me. I wanted a bodyguard. But I thought that if I told you the truth, you wouldn't believe me. That's why I didn't tell you. But now... I'll come clean. Hmm. My life is being threatened by a secret society. They're called the Nizet Laws. Nizet Laws? What? 
A group under the control of the Wajet system. What? Their ultimate goal is to complete X00639. I discovered them and what they were up to, and now... Whoa, 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 what is going on? Date, please help me! They're going to kill me! Wait, wait! Slow down. I'm lost, girl. What? <laughs> What's going on? About... I don't even remember how you pronounce that. It's spelled N-A-I-X-A-T-L-O-Z. Sometimes they just call themselves the Nice. Nice. They're deeply connected to the Wajet system. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Their organization is everywhere. International politics, business leaders, all operating in secret. What is XOO639? In geosynchronous orbit around the equator, longitude 100 degrees east, there's a satellite. It's about 150 feet long. Quite big for a satellite. True. Most satellites are between 5 and 10 feet long. The International Space Station is roughly 330 feet long, so this satellite she is describing is about half as big. It's always in the same place, and there's no doubt that it's man-made. But by who? And when it was launched, no one knows. Also true. The first to discover this satellite was a space advocacy group in Japan. Is this real? It was on the news for a short while. No one could identify it precisely. Most people thought it was some secret U.S. military satellite and that was it. But that's not the truth. X00639 is a super-powered radio transmitter. Radio? Transmitter? But it's not complete. It's still being built. And that's what they're trying to do. That's what Wajet wants them to do. I'm confused. You know what? Let's just Google that right now. Okay, I don't think this is a real thing because, I mean, the first result is an AI the Somnifiles wiki link, so I guess it's not real. About their relation to the Wajet system. Well, you know about the Wajet system, right? It's the core of artificial intelligence. This is what I mean about, like, the real and the fictional stuff. It's hard to tell <laughs> in this game what is supposed to be real facts and fictional elements sometimes, because I'm just like, you explain them in ex the exact same, like, kind of manner that I'm just like, uh... Do you know where it came from? It was developed by the American tech conglomerate Elgorg but no specifics have been revealed. Basically, the Wajet system artificial intelligence is from outer space. It was transmitted to Earth in binary as radio waves. They were caught by the space dev team at Elgorg, and when they decoded it, they found that it was a truly incredible source code. That's the code they used to create the Wajet system. Is this true, Iba? It is patently ridiculous. Oh. So, even Iba's saying it's fake? I'm confused. <laughs> so to summarize Iris' story, the Wajet system AI was built by decoding radio waves sent from outer space. A secret society called Nice Alto or Nice knows the secret of the Wajet system and obeys its will. Their ultimate goal is to complete the radio transmitter satellite X00639. I'm confused. <laughs> Why is Widget building this? I managed to learn that too. They're building X00639 so they can transmit their own data to a planet far away. Is it just me or does this feel like it's coming out of nowhere? Like, I don't feel like we've established this information at any point. Which, I mean, it's fine. Like, this is where we're learning this information. But I feel like, what? We're talking about, like... <laughs> What is going on? I guess it's true in this game because she was gonna get kidnapped. If they contact a sentient species, then the process will repeat itself again. That species will decode the signal, create an AI, then builds a radio transmitter. 
Because they're an AI, they can create copies of themselves for transmission. Doing this over and over means that Wajet will eventually spread across the universe. And after that? After that? Yeah, what happens? Yeah. After they're spread all over space, what do they do next? I don't know. You don't know? Well, why do humans have children? It's the same thing. Wajet is alive. They want to spread across the universe. That's their destiny. Why do the members of Nizla Laws follow Wajet? Niz and Wajet have a mutually beneficial relationship. Wajet can control stock prices. Niz benefits from that. In return, Niz helps Wajet's ultimate goal. That's why Niz is in militaries and corporations all over the world. To help build X00639. <laughs> I feel so lost. Why does the Wajet need Niz to keep it a secret? Let's say that one day Wajet shows up on your computer screen. Hi guys, nice to meet you. Want to help us out? Do you really think humans would help? Most people would probably think their PC has a virus or something. Or they'd panic and try to remove them. I don't know what would happen. I'm sure Wajet made their own predictions. And they thought it was best to control certain parts of humanity from behind the scenes. But they needed some kind of direct influence. They can't build a satellite by themselves, right? That's why they created Nizet Laws. Nizet Laws. Yeah, I need a summary. Alright, I get it. Anyway, brain has been through so many explanations in this one episode. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you do? Not really, but she doesn't need to know that. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. <sighs> but listening to your explanation, Nice doesn't sound like a bad organization. No, that's not true. Think of how much money and resources are going to Nice. Think of how many people are suffering in poverty. And all the wars happening across the planet. And human trafficking and slavery. Nice has the power and resources to put an end to all of that. But they don't. They only care about themselves. And they'll do anything to protect their own interests. They'll kill if they have to. Which is why I'm being targeted. Because I found out their secret. How did you even do that? <laughs> oh my god, yeah. How did you even do that? Well, I can't say yet. But it's true. Believe me. Nice is dangerous. You have to understand, Date. You... you saw my dead body. I'm really confused. How does this all connect back to the Cyclops killer? <laughs> like, the new Cyclops killer? Or even the old one? What is going on here? Do you think that you were killed by Nyes in the parallel world? Yes, I think so. You're the only person I can trust. Please, don't leave me. You have to protect me. What in the world is going on? I'm going to think. <laughs> Iris' story is, well, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't believe a word of it. But it is true that she was always kidnapped by some mysterious group. And it is true that I saw her dead body in the cold storage warehouse. And if that happened in a parallel world... Date, you can't tell me that you actually believe this. Aiba, you use the Wadjet system too, right? So what if I do? Do you suspect me, Date? Do you think I'm an agent of Nice? Fine. This can be solved easily. Why not look into her mind? Then you will discover if her story is true or not. <gasps> oh, we're gonna sync with her again. Oh! Ooh, this might be interesting. Because we've synced with her one time and that was like messed up. But that was like f also fully focused on the original Cyclops serial killer. So, are we just gonna find, like, a completely different scenario this time? The sink, of course. 
Ooh. Let's go, I guess. This might be a good place to end it this time. With Iris in the passenger seat, I headed back to Abyss. But really, I didn't want to take her there. His boss would be waiting. The men who attacked us at Golden Yokojo were waiting for us. That means they knew we were coming. Why would that be? Someone tipped them off. Well, who could have? Someone who knew we were going to Marble. That's right. No. It couldn't be. <gasps> boss? Is Boss really a bad person? No! Boss. No! I <laughs> I will defend my queen. <laughs> Impossible. Mm. Hmm? Iba, can you contact Pewter? I want to ask him something. Understood. Oh, Dante! Do you need something? Hey, Pewter. But first, steering wheel, dashboard. Dangan? Oh! Ron. <gasps> what? <laughs> you can't just do that to me? Dangan? Ronpa. Dangan? Ronpa. Dangan? Ronpa. Dangan? Ronpa. Ronpa. What the heck? Okay, I'm 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 I I am glad that I clicked that then. Glove box. Um, Date, have you got anything weird in here? Just a bag of flour. Weird. Yeah, and these plastic baggies. Just flour. That's flour. I can't believe they actually followed up with that joke. Give him here. There's a soaking wet merman in the back seat. What? I'm just kidding. Don't joke around at a time like this. Peter might like it. You're gonna make me aggro. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, hey Peter. Does the sink machine exist outside of Abyss? Oh. Pewter, I need to know something. I hadn't even thought about that. Does a sink machine exist outside of Abyss? If it does, I won't have to go to Abyss. Oh, okay, so he just wants to do it without seeing boss. I thought Pewter might know, but... There's only one sink machine in the entire world, and it's with us at Abyss. Oh, okay then. For now, anyway. For now? The Chiba Police Department was working on a prototype, but it was stolen six years ago. Oh. 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 Stolen? Yes. It was being transported when it was attacked and then stolen by an armed group of men. <gasps> the nice people? The culprit is still on the loose. The device was never recovered either. Iba, were you aware of this? No. This is new information. I was not even aware there was a prototype. Hmm. Where are you? Where are you? I'm out drinking in Shinjuku. I was actually thinking of heading over to Golden Yokocho, but... Oh. I heard something about a shootout. So the cops have it sealed off. Maybe a shootout between gangs or something? The world has become a dangerous place. About boss. Pewter, where's boss right now? Not sure. I don't think she's at Abyss anymore. Maybe she went home? Alright then, well, I guess we'll go. <laughs> so, neither you or boss are at Abyss right now? No. Good. I could take Iris there without a problem. Thanks, Pewter. See you later. Sure thing. Hey, where are we going? Inside your dreams. What? I'm gonna sync with you to determine if what you were telling me is true. And if it is true, I'll fulfill your wish. I'll be your bodyguard. My wish? You don't remember? To become your bodyguard. Yeah. Is that all right? Yes, of course.
just like Peter said, boss wasn't there. All right, well, I think I'm gonna have to end it here today. I know this is a cliffhanger, but I think that was a ton of information that we just uh, had to ingest. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna need some time to review the footage while I'm editing, just to like get a better sense of what just happened. Cause not gonna lie, I'm a little bit lost <laughs> on where we're going from here. Like I kind of get it, but I think I think some time to reflect on this will be very helpful. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks for watching this episode and if you would like to support me on Patreon where you can help support my art and video content, I will do my best, I suppose, to try finish this game as quickly as possible. But again, I probably will not make it in time for the sequel release date. But hey, I still hope that you guys will be interested in following along my progress and uh, for all that is to come because I definitely definitely do want to play the sequel. Thank you to all my smiling patrons that you guys are awesome. Again, uh, yeah, we're gonna have a really busy two months ahead, so <laughs> hope you're looking forward to that. And thank you to the reserve course students as well. You guys are great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what do you guys think about this whole situation with Tesla? I mean, this is definitely her focused route. We have been hanging out with her for the like past two hours or something. And I don't know. At this point, like Iva just doesn't believe her at all right now. But I mean, she was almost kidnapped, which gives her credibility. And so like, I'm just curious, is this something like maybe just Iba doesn't know anything about? And like, if it's connected to the Wadjet system, Maybe it's something she's un- <laughs> I mean, unconscious of, maybe? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what goes on. And I'm very curious to see how Iris' insomnia will look like this time, uh, when it's not focused on the serial killings. Cause yeah, uh, so far only Shoko has died, right? That's weirdly different from the other left pods. Alright, well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!